The amount of student loan debt Americans hold is at a record high, and much of it is shouldered by millennials, people now in their late 20s and 30s, which means that young people coming along behind them in what's called Generation Z, those born after 1996, are facing some tough choices about how to pay for college. As economics correspondent Paul Salmon learned, some are taking lessons from what's happened to their older brothers and sisters. It's part of our weekly segment, Making Sense. And this is the famous gate here of Columbia. So you've all visited here? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Students across the country are clamoring to get into schools like Columbia University, where barely 6% of applicants are accepted despite its cost. $74,000 a year, including room and board, more than $10,000 greater than the typical U.S. household earns in a year. For my family, college expenses are not the easiest thing to pay for. For Gen Z, the post-millennials, today's college prices may just be too high. Going to a CUNY has become an option. And CUNY meaning a city university yes. in New York. The cost at CUNY? A mere $6,500 a year in tuition. And students can live at home. Has anyone ever considered not going to college. Personal finance guru Beth Kobliner had assembled a group of economically diverse New York City Gen Zers, all high schoolers, part of the first wave of Gen Z to reach college age. We crossed Broadway to Barnard, a women's college long tied to Columbia. Price? This school is $70,000 a year. 70? 70,000 a year. That's Room, that's board, tuition, room and, tuition. and car. And a car. <laughs> and no car. But don't just look at the sticker price, because schools offer financial aid, says Barnard's VP of Enrollment, Jennifer Fondiller. Barnard and many schools are offering tremendous amount in financial aid. We meet 100% of need, which means that if your family can't afford the, the cost of Barnard, we're going to help you and meet that need that you have. But to meet that need also requires most students to borrow. Two-thirds of grads are now saddled with loans, and their total debt has passed $1.5 trillion. Half again the total owed on credit cards. That's 45 million borrowers, averaging more than $30,000 each. The story at Barnard? Our students do take out loans, but we really limit and maximize the loans that they can get out. Do you give guidelines like how much debt is too much debt? There's not necessarily a cap, but we'll talk to them about what do they feel comfortable with. Fifteen years ago, millennials' top worry about applying for college was getting into their top choice. Today, Gen Zers say it's student debt. How many of you are worried about taking on student loans? Who was not worried? And is that because you come from a family where there's enough money already? No, it's because I've already implanted in my, in my mind that I have to work as hard as I have to in order to have a scholarship that will get me through college. It's not that you're not scared of them, you're just yeah. not going anywhere near them. Yeah. I feel like I'm scared of taking out loans just because the word debt is just very intimidating. Kobliner, who writes and speaks about youth finance, admires Gen Z's caution when it comes to debt but warns against becoming phobic. No, I don't think student loans are necessarily a horrible thing, but you want to stick with federal student loans. So federal student loans because they have a much lower Much lower interest, interest rate. Given the price and the opportunity cost of college, however, the money you could make by working instead, why not just go to school online, which can be thousands cheaper in tuition, or skip college altogether? People always talk about the college experience and how important it is. So I feel like if you want to develop socially, like going to college and just being on a campus and like being on your own and like putting yourself in a situation where you have to get to know people is extremely vital to your life. You could also like be with people that feed off your knowledge or you could feed off their knowledge. So that's kind of the, the, the main reason for me is to be with other people, just like, you know, to connect. I learn better when I'm in a classroom setting. When I'm at home on my computer, I can be on my phone and I could just like, you know, get distracted so easily. I can have like the lesson being like on my computer screen right there and then have Netflix on the side. Indeed, the Pew Research Center reports that fully 59% of Gen Zers aged 18 to 20 were enrolled in college, compared to 53% of millennials in 2002. In 1986, the number was only 44%. The main reason for the rise seems obvious. College, though pricier than ever, 
has been a historically good investment. On average, grads make $300,000 more over their lifetime, even after subtracting tuition and other costs, than their diploma-less peers. But will it continue to pay going forward? Hey, PayPal founder Peter Thiel, though himself a Stanford grad, has offered students with good ideas $100,000 to start a company instead of going to school. Would you accept it? For me, not just going ahead and take a risk, because what if I fail? You know, what am I going to do then? Like, I have to get another job, but how can I get another, another job with a high school degree only? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, like, really play out. I have to think of a plan B if all else fails. A prudent plan B, because older Gen Zers, like those in our unscientific sample at least, are economically hard-nosed. And shooting for the top tier in an economy they've seen become more steeply split their entire lives. A lot of us in our age want a job that's high up there. Maybe the dream is to become rich or higher middle class. Anxiety about what economic class they'll wind up in is increasingly evident in the actual college classes students choose. So-called STEM majors have soared in recent decades, while an English degree, with which something like 10% of students unapologetically graduated in my day, is down to 2% prompting the question, is a degree from a liberal arts college worth it economically these days, especially if it's in the liberal arts? Humanity, social science areas, they open doors um, because it is not just about the specific skill that you're learning, but it's all the other pieces that go into what that major might be like in the classroom setting, to be able to collaborate, to be able to be a good public speaker. Von Diller's humanities pitch sounded good to me. I focused on art history and sociology, and to Beth Kobliner, a proud English major. And there's plenty of support for what Von Diller says. Three quarters of employers say soft skills are as important as technical ones. But to our Gen Zers, I don't really like believe that. I didn't really buy her argument either. If I'm someone who's gonna hire, is looking between two people, one who is an English major and one who has a major that is necessary for the field, I'm gonna choose the one who's necessary for the field. Lauren, you agree with that? Yeah, I love certain literature that I have read at my school and I just would love to continue doing that, but at the end of the day, that kind of doesn't really lead anywhere. And so Gen Z, seems to be thinking about college costs a lot more skeptically, some would say more realistically, others more narrowly, than those who came before. For the PBS NewsHour, this is economics correspondent Paul Salman, reporting from New York.